Okay, hi, so in this video we're going to speak a bit about useful energy. So in the last two videos we've spoke about the conservation of energy and energy transfer. Now useful energy is going to tie that up. So energy can be transferred into various different things. Useful energy is when we transfer energy into something that we want. So here we go, it's energy transferred into the form we want. For example, when you were driving a car, uh, you were burning the fuel in the engine and the form that you want the energy to be converted into is kinetic energy because you want your car to move. You don't really care whether the engine heats up or, uh, well, I guess some people do care if it makes a noise. A lot of people like the sound of a car engine, but it's not the most useful. You use a car to get places and heating up the engine especially is not really very useful. So your useful energy there would be your kinetic energy. Okay, and that means that the energy you don't want is wasted energy. So, wasted energy. So, there we go. Energy transferred into a form that we don't want. Now, the obvious example is, of course, with a car engine or with the car brakes. Uh, and you can see that in your textbook. So, I'm going to use a slightly different one. So, here we go. One of these guys. This is a TV. Now, what do we use a TV for? Well, the TV is going to give off various different types of energy. The energy going in, so energy in, in, is going to be electrical energy. So it's going to be electrical. Now that electrical energy is going to be converted into something that we can use. And the energy that we want, so the useful energy, is going to be sound Okay, and light. So obviously the light is going to be the picture that we get, and obviously we're going to want sound coming out of the TV as well. But what's going to be the wasted energy? Well, wasted energy, TVs actually heat up. So the TV is going to give out a fair amount of heat, and that heat is your wasted energy. Now, one question you might be asking is, well, where does all this energy go? Because if a TV is constantly giving out heat energy, sound energy, and light energy, surely eventually your room would fill up with light, it would get really, really loud, and it would get too hot. Obviously, we know that that doesn't actually happen. So what, what really happens to the energy? Well, what we call that is spreading out. Spreading. Spreading out. Because what's happening really, when energy is given out, it spreads out and fills the environment that it's in. So when your light is given out of your TV, immediately you can see it. But some of the light is also obviously um, going to be bouncing off the walls and going out your windows and everything else. And that light energy will spread out and spread out and spread out. And it means that you can no longer detect it. So as the energy spreads out, it becomes less useful. So as energy, I'm just going to write E, spreads out, spreads out, it becomes less useful, useful, so as energy spreads out it becomes less useful and that is true. The heat as well, as the heat is given out, even though it's not useful energy to begin with, something like heat energy coming from a radiator certainly is. But if you leave a radiator on for five minutes and it gives you enough heat to heat you up, an hour later it won't still be heating you up because the heat will have spread out and it will be lost in uh, the environment. So as it spreads out, it becomes less useful. And now this is going to lead us quite nicely into the concept of energy efficiency. So energy, there we go, energy efficiency. Now first of all, we need to recap what energy is measured in. So energy, the unit for us measuring energy is the joule. So it's measured in joules, and that is given the letter J. Okay. Now the energy efficiency of anything tells us uh, how well it is turning the input energy into useful energy. So if we go back to our example of the TV, our energy in is our electrical and our useful energy is sound and light. Now, if most of the energy 
most of the electrical energy that is, is being turned into the sound and the light, then we can say that this TV is efficient. If loads of this energy is being turned into heat and that is wasted energy, we can say that it's not being very efficient. And so we can sum that up in terms of a simple um, mathematic formula. We can say that the efficiency, efficiency, awful handwriting here, is equal to the useful energy, energy transferred, that just means um, the, the amount of useful energy you're going to get out, useful energy transferred divided by the total energy in. So the amount of energy you are supplying to that device or whatever it is. Now this will give us a number which will be below 1 or it will be 1 at the very maximum. And if we want a percentage efficiency, so I'm going to put this in brackets here in a different colour, then what we would do is we would times that by 100. So efficiency as a number will be below 1. Uh, efficiency as a percentage will be below 100. Uh, I say below because almost always we'll, we will not get a 100% efficient device. Now let me just give you a quick example using this TV. Now let's say for example the amount of electrical energy coming in is 10 joules. Okay. Now what if we got 2 joules of sound out of the TV, we got 6 joules of light out of the TV, and we got 2 joules of heat out of the TV. Now that means that all the energy has been converted into sound, light and heat. And so our total useful energy is these two, so that's going to be 8. And our total energy in is 10. So let's plug that into our formula. The efficiency for this TV, we're going to have our useful energy, which remember was our 6 plus R2, which was 8 joules, divided by our total energy in, which is 10 joules. And that will give us a grand total of 0 0.8 as our efficiency. And if we want that as a percentage, we times that by 100. And we can say that our TV is 80% efficient. So our percentage efficiency rating for the TV would be 80%. Now this is hypothetical. TVs are actually way less efficient than this, but it gives you a good idea. Now let me give you one more example. If we had a light bulb, okay, so this is a light bulb, whatever, it's giving out light, this is a light bulb, and we are supplying, uh, let's say, 90 joules of energy into the light bulb, that's going to be electrical energy. Now what we're getting out is pretty much light, and we're getting out heat okay and let's say for example we obtain 15 uh, joules of light and 75 joules of heat okay so work out the efficiency pause the video now and have a go okay so I hope you had a go um, what we do is we use exactly the same equation we say that the useful energy, of course, of a light bulb is going to be the light. And so on top, we are going to have 15 joules. We are going to divide that by our total energy in. And that will give us an answer of 0 0.17 to two significant figures. So I'm only rounding here to two significant figures. And if I want that as the percentage efficiency, I'm going to multiply that by 100, and that will give me 17% efficient to two significant figures. So not very efficient, but unfortunately light bulbs sometimes are uh, this bad at conserving energy. And one last thing I want to show you is a Sankey diagram. So Sankey diagram. Okay, and these basically are a visual way of representing your efficiency. So we're going to use this light bulb as the example. What we do 
is we have a thick arrow coming in representing all of our input of energy. And so I could label this and I could say that there are 90 joules coming in and that is for our light bulb. Now what we're getting out is over here we have one arrow which is not really very thick. This is our 15 joules of light. So I could label this here as our light. Okay, and so that's not a lot. And everything else that we're getting is waste. And it's common to draw your waste going downwards because it's not going forwards towards anything you want it to. This is waste and this is our heat. Label that as 75 joules. And there we go, we have a Sankey diagram. What's important is that this really wide part of the arrow here shows all the energy and we've split it up into our light and our heat. So all the energy has now diverged and we've got light as our useful and heat as our wasted. Okay, so lastly what you need to think about is where um, energy wastage is going to come from for different appliances. For example, the brake pads um, in the brakes in your car, what's going to be the waste energy there? Well, what we're doing there is we are um, trying to get the car to slow down, um, but we are going to produce lots of heat because friction between the brake pads uh, and the wheel discs are going to produce a lot of heat. This is good because obviously we do need to slow the car down. However, if we could use that heat for something rather than just heating up the brake pads, that would stop that heat being wasted. Um, something else may be, for example, the engine heating up because different parts of the machine are rubbing together and that causes friction. What you do then is you make sure that things are properly lubricated um, so parts of the machine or parts of the engine in this case are properly lubricated and that stops or reduces the amount of friction and this means that less of the energy is going to be transferred as heat and that means the efficiency is going to increase because more of the energy can be used to do what you want it to. Okay, and there are many more um, examples of where energy could be lost. Have a think about those yourself. Um, but if you are struggling or you do want to ask me any questions, please do send me an email using the link below or write a comment in the comment box. I'm going to stop here. Like I say, please do leave a comment and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.